Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, voice <laughs> is a little better tonight. <laughs> Hey, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go from now until midnight on the east coast of the United States. And, uh, you know, uh, every now and then uh, we go out and we talk to some of our really, really good old friends, like uh, this guy. Let's see. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> a little hoarse today because of my... <clears throat> uh, my cold and stuff like that causing me to have laryngitis but what the hell let's call out uh to our old friend Stephen pearl boy it sure goes through a whole bunch of things doesn't it i told you to never call me when there's a family affair marathon on <laughs> <laughs> Sir, Bobby is OT'd in the bathroom, and Jody's looking into Mrs. Beasley's head for more drugs. What's up? I don't know. What's up with you? Nothing, man. I sit here watching Family Affair because I eat a full lunch. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I uh, I have uh, laryngitis today, as you can hear. Oh, I'm sorry. You got the Scott Muni thing going on mm -hmm. here. Well, what's great is it, it's terrible for my speaking voice. But of if course. I if I were a basso uh, a, a contralto, I could me 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 me. on a jazz station. But if I right now we're gonna listen to <clears throat> here's how I test here's how I test Charlie Parker doing one of his best hits here. <laughs> here. Mister Dexanex on the Glockenspiel. This is one of the dial record sessions. <laughs> here here's how I <clears throat> here's how I uh, uh, do it. Uh, uh, me, me, me. Here's how I detest whether I have laryngitis or not when I try to go for a high note and I go, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was me when I was a smoker. You can't hear. Ah, ah. Now I can go, ah, ah. Full round sound like a ball coming from the diaphragm. Ah, but before it was, ah, ah. You know what I never understood is how certain singers uh, like Frank Sinatra would smoke. When they knew, oh what, yeah, they smoke and they uh, drink their Jack Daniels. And <laughs> but they knew what it did to their voice, and uh, you know, yeah. Sinatra's went pretty early in comparison yeah. to people like Tony Bennett, who's taking good care of his. I don't think we ever saw him with a cigarette in his hand. You know, well, that's because I smoke crayons. Crayons are good. They got that wax of thing and that groove <laughs> for the vocal cords. Yeah. You remember? You remember when you were a kid? The big thing was you went down to the candy store and you bought candy. Cigarettes? Oh, what do you know? We lost him. Oh, here we go. We'll, we'll call him again. I don't know what that was about. I have no idea. Now it's calling him. Here we, here, we're going through the whole process. Jesus Christ, somebody got their phone at the 99 cent store. Let's take two. Uh, well, you know, it's it's Skype. Uh, they screwed us up. I, I hate Skype and everything that stands for. And, and me too. Anyway. But we're... Uh, anyway, uh, 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 you remember uh, candy cigarettes? Sure, I had chocolate cigarettes, and so they had these other kind that you could puff on. They had powder at the end, and a little puffs. Oh, would oh come really? Out I never, I, <laughs> I never had one of those, but they, I oh, had, yeah. they had the chocolate <laughs> ones, which Look I like an adult buy these cigarettes, which I, which I really like, because who the hell doesn't like chocolate, right? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, and you don't then, like chocolate. but then, man who doesn't like chocolate can never be a real man. The other kind were made out of like uh, mint or something, and at the very uh -huh. end they would p uh, paint them red. So they look like yeah, they, sure. <laughs> they were lit. <laughs> and we would go around smoking these things. This is how we were trained to smoke. Uh-huh, sure. Did you ever smoke? Sure. Did you ever smoke? Oh, uh, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I said, did you ever smoke? Oh, I smoked for 38 years. Are you kidding? Oh, okay. All right. I, I was like a pack and a half a day, man, for 38 years. So I quit 10 years. If I, if I make it to October 16th, uh, it'll be 10 years since I had one. Well, you know, it'll be, you know, when I quit, I quit on the air in 1982. 82? I remember when you quit on the air in 1982. Yep. And uh, yep. Uh, that's the best decision I ever made. Yep. 
You know, oh, I made cigarettes a lot, are horrendous, man. Cigarettes are horrible. I made a lot of decisions in life that uh, that uh, were okay, but this one was the best one. Oh, without a doubt, to they're horrible. With. They serve no purpose except to kill you. <laughs> they don't well, get high. With. They don't do anything. To begin with, and you get hooked on them, and you, just, yeah. you need it. You didn't know there's nothing, nothing like, like waking up in the morning and having a cup of coffee and a couple of cigarettes. Yeah. Nothing like it. But anyway, so I mean, I, for instance, I loved. Um, um, uh, what I was going to say about cigarette smoking was, he, think of all the money we saved by not uh-huh. smoking in the oh, last yeah. couple of years. Sure. I mean, when we were smoking cigarettes, it was like, you know, three cents a pack. Yeah. yeah. It was like an amazing. <laughs> it was like 10 bucks a pack now. Huh? It's insane. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's oh, a lot. Well, I, I think I, in, I go through a pack and a half a day easily. So that'd be 15 bucks a day. It, you know, how much is that a month? Man? In New York, I think uh, it is 12. Uh, uh, dollars a, lot of money, a, pack. a lot of money. I could be spending that on weed or or cookies or something. Yeah, yeah, or just you know health insurance or, or whatever, or, or buying cat food or whatever. So anyway, I mean, I uh, uh, and I quit. I quit early enough that I think I didn't wind up getting the cancer from it. You know. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I was starting. And I don't know if I was getting emphysema, but my breathing was fucked up, and I know if I didn't quit, I'd be dead now or in pretty bad shape. So. I'm glad I did. it was just time to stop. It was 38 years, and I'm just glad I'm away from those things. Oh, yeah. nasty. Terrible, 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 a terrible habit, and the worst part about it is once you start smoking, the only reason you smoke is so that you won't need a cigarette. Exactly. It serves no purpose except to hook yeah. you. You, know, you want I mean, like cocaine. It just, it just makes you want more. <laughs> well, but at least cocaine gets you high. Yeah, that gets you high. Cigarettes so like don't get you stuff. high. Cigarettes don't do yeah. anything. Cigarettes just keep you from wanting another cigarette. Exactly. Oh, that talk about a devil weed. Tobacco is like, <laughs> what purpose does a cigarette have to kill you? Boy, when they took care of them in the you know years ago, I was so happy. I mean, I, you uh-huh. know, I mean, it 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 is literally. I mean, I tell kids, you know, you want to smoke, stop smoking, do heroin. You know, I think yeah. you're. you're yeah. We can we can get you off heroin, you know. Yeah, no, <laughs> get you off heroin. Oh God! No, uh, si- uh, no I, more cigarettes. No I, more cigarettes. I, and I, as I say, as I look back on smoking, I never understood why I smoked, and the reason I uh, smoked was to make sure that I didn't need a cigarette. Hey, <laughs> what a but stupid! But there's a part where you start, and when you start, it's not very pleasant. But then along the line, somewhere then. And, before you need, know it, you need a cigarette. Well, the reason, you're like five or ten a day. Or, the reason I would tell kids to do heroin instead of smoking is that at least heroin, <laughs> heroin has a payoff. Yeah, that's true. Well, the way cigarettes cost nowadays, it's like doing heroin. You have to steal a TV every day to get a pack. <laughs> hey, I think we just got a new Zenith. Okay, when will they go out? I need a pack of Winston's. <laughs> you know, I mean... I don't think. See, I, I I think the reason they raised the prices on cigarettes was to get people to stop smoking, but uh-huh. that didn't stop people from smoking. You know what stopped people from smoking? Making it a social thing by saying, yeah. "Oh, you smoke." You know, in the old days, it was cool to smoke, man. They, you know, sure. you, you, oh, really... you could smoke in banks and smoke on planes. It was like the way to light of the bank and light one up. <laughs> It was a simpler time. I mean, I was watching, they just brought back the Twilight Zone. So they're showing these old, you know, for promotion, these old videos of uh, Rod Serling uh, introducing <laughs> the Twilight Zone. And he's always got a cigarette in his hand. Always got a cigarette. He's like Sammy Davis Jr. They always a cigarette in his hand. Yeah. That's why he died at 50. That's right. Exactly why he died at 50. Yep. You know, smoking those cigarettes like crazy. They say he did four packs a day or something like oh, that. Oh, God. Well, because he Picture was... Picture, if you will, a Jewish writer who needs a carton a day to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I used to light a carton at a time. Just yeah. put it in my mouth yeah. and light it. Of course, I wouldn't take it out of the box. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah, everybody saw you. Look at that. I was watching like Andy Griffith shows and I Love Lucy shows, the old black and white ones. And they were sitting around lounging and Opie's in the room and Andy's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> what, was Andy smoking cigarettes on that show? There's a couple. There's a couple where Andy's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, he's playing the guitar on the porch. and got a cigarette oh, in the mouth. <laughs> but I got to tell you. acceptable. And usually the sponsor of some of these shows was like Winston or Pell-Mell or whatever. So. When we grew up, folks, smoking made you look cool. Oh, sure, man. That's why we started. You see the, the cool kids on the corner and cigarette dangling from their mouth. And, you know, say, hey, man, that's cool. That's like, you know, greaser cool. It was a great prop. 
Yep. You know. Boy, do they fool us. <laughs> Did you ever smoke on stage? Did I smoke on stage? Maybe late at night at like the Holy City Zoo if I went on like one in the morning just messing around. I don't think, no, I never, I don't think I ever did a set with a cigarette in my hand. Well, comedians we know who died, like uh, Bill Hicks, I know, drank a lot and smoked a lot. And for some reason, yep. smoking and drinking can give you pancreatic cancer. Oh, really? Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, that's what he died of. That's all. Yeah, I, I know he, he was a smoker. Every, I don't know if he was a heavy smoker. I guess he was. Oh, he was a heavy he everything. Still, I, I, who knows, though, because if you die of that, you, know, you can still smoke and drink your brains out at that age. It doesn't hit you for another 10 or 20 years, but maybe he was just destined to have a short life here. Who knows? But or you, but it you might know, have contributed. We'll never know. I hate Bill Hicks, and I hate him because he died. And I hate him because he yeah. died because he was so fucking good. That we he missed was, out yeah, on so nice much. Guy. God, he, oh. he was just, yeah, it was very sad. Very sad when he If died. anybody he listening to us has never heard of Bill Hicks, just go online, go to YouTube, type in Bill Hicks, and then watch what you get. You will just sit there and be amazed at how good this guy was. You know? Oh, he was amazing. Or better yet, guy, go on Amazon and for like 50 cents you can get a 1988 movie called Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen that he's in, and I'm also in it too. So oh, yeah, okay. Well. filmed at the Manetta Theater back in 88. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. Bill, Bill, Bill was amazing in it. Do you get any royalties off of that? Is that uh, right? Oh, yeah, I get like a, a half a penny every seven years. It's like leaking from the neck up. It's like, I can't wait. So, you know, <laughs> we, the, the, the guy who produced it or had something to do with it, uh, I forget his name, but uh, if I knew what I would say, it. he advertised the movies. The movie that's so dirty, you'll never see it on Showtime or HBO. No. And because of that, you never saw it on Showtime or HBO. So thanks yeah. a lot, asshole. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it, it was it was a good stand-up movie. So uh, you know, but we'll probably it see. A long time, Bill and Bill's amazing in it. If I just was, Bill and Otto and George, the X-rated ventriloquist. Let me give him a two. two Whatever three. happened to Otto but and George? Are they still around? Otto 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 Peterson died five years ago. Very oh. sad. So uh, there's no more Otto and George. It was so the Bill dirty gone the, gone and, the dirty dummy and, uh, act. Yeah, it was the dirty dummy. It's like act. the dirty six now. So <laughs> dirty half a dozen now. So. But Bill's Bill's brilliant in everything he did, including that movie. And I'm just giving myself a plug because I'm in it. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I should tell you, I don't know if you, I'm sure you knew him. Did you know Fred Reamer? The no, lawyer? I didn't. The lawyer? The lawyer? No, Fred Reamer? No, I don't know. Oh, right okay. I've heard of James Reamer, but that's well, no, close as Well, Reamer was my lawyer uh, for a while, and, and a good friend, a good friend. Uh -huh. And uh, the reason I always talk about Fred Reamer is before I had Fred Reamer, I had a lawyer named Joel Turtle. Uh-huh. And somehow, having a lawyer named Turtle, it just doesn't carry with it the kind of weight <laughs> when, when you tell somebody you're going to sue them and say, you're going to have to speak to my attorney, Mr. Turtle. <laughs> he you know. works slow, but he wins the race. So I switched over to Fred Reamer, and boy, you know, when you say, if I have to sue you, you're going to have to deal with my lawyer, Mr. Reamer. Oh yeah! Oh, Mr. Reamer. Yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> uh, and and so I love telling that story because uh, it is true. I went from a, a lawyer named Turtle to a lawyer named uh, Reamer, yeah. and I get a, a, a text, not a text, but a thing through Facebook yesterday from an old mutual friend of ours. He died. Oh. Now you know I I I this is the second person this month who has died. That is was somewhat close to me on some level, you know. Wow, yeah. And this is getting ridiculous. And the only the only saving grace of it is the reason I'm hearing about all these people dying is because I'm getting so old. That's right. If we live much longer, won't be nobody coming to our funerals because we'll all be dead. Now he probably was in his sixties. I think. I'm not sure. I don't oh, know how old. That's Fred right. I think you're being sixty three myself. Yeah. Uh, and I just, so don't die on me, okay? I'll Jeez. try not to. I go to the gym every other day, and I don't smoke cigarettes, and uh, I'm a good boy. But, you know, if uh, the Reaper wants you, he's going to take you. So how much you can do? I could walk down the street and get hit by a falling piano. You know something? Well, I don't go. care. I don't care if you go to the gym. I don't care if you do this and you do that. If uh, if your number's up, your number's up. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. He can just you know, be sitting at home and a, and a runaway egg truck comes through the window. Well, anything can happen. Here's the thing but, that... Uh, so far, I've lived 63 years. It's been pretty good. So, you know, whatever. Here's the whatever thing. Happens, happens. But here's the thing that also bothered me. 
uh, he um, um, uh, he he supposedly had a heart attack and died in his apartment. And was there for two days before anybody found him. Oh lord! Now that was the same thing. I had a friend, John Rockwell, who died about a month ago, and the same thing happened to him. He was in his apartment for two days before anybody found him. And I just, I God, it. you know, thank. God, I'm married because, you know, I probably won't die alone, or if I die alone, all the body will be found really fast. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It'll be rotting there for three weeks. Or Although, does it, it was re- an actress from, like, 50s movies, Yvette Vickers, who died a few years ago, and they found her, like, a year after she died. She was in her house all mummified and everything. She just, it was horrible. They said to people, and realized after a year, hey, I haven't seen that old lady from that house there for a while. You know, where, where, where's she been? We haven't seen her for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen her providing newspapers were like, you know, chin high on her porch and everything. But <laughs> it looked there she was. I haven't seen that old lady there since she was in The Blob Goes Wet from 58. I don't know. Uh, so, w- w- but, you know, what the hell? You'll be, you won't know it. You'll be dead. So what the fuck? Well, maybe you won't. Maybe you <coughs> Excuse me. That's my that's my cold acting up. There um, you go. Here, let me take a lo- throat lozenge. Take, take your medicine. Take your paracord. Take a, no, I take, a, take a lozenge, and that'll keep me from coughing. Take a lozenge. Send for the Smith Brothers. Guys. Lozenge. Lozenge. That's a Jerry <laughs> Lewis word. Lozenge. That's right. The Smith Brothers. Anyway, uh, I think that maybe I'm afraid that what happens when you die, you don't really die. You know, you're kind of hovering over your body looking down at it. <laughs> and uh, fun, especially if you're like yeah, to death. and 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 then when nobody's coming by and the cat is starting to nibble on you, you know, yeah. you you kind of go, well, wait a minute, hold on, I don't want, you know. So yeah, well, I have three cats, so they'll probably like, devour me pretty quickly. So I don't worry about that. Yeah. They'll find a spine, you know. It's <laughs> <That just, laughs> a spine. It looks like pearl spine. <laughs> well, I, 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 I have no friends. Okay, I admit it. I have no friends. You're, I have one lucky. friend. He and, has no friends. He doesn't have to do any favors. I have one friend. His name is Shecky. He lives out in Queens. Okay? He's my uh, best friend. He's my only best friend, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't say best friend easily. You know, people go, oh, and I have this best friend, Susan. Yeah, sure. And you say, well, when did you see her last? <laughs> and you say five years ago. That's not a good friend. Okay. Exactly. A uh, good friend is somebody you talk to on a rather constant basis. And so Shecky is my last good friend. My other two drop dead. All right? And I'm thinking, he lives out in Queens. He's not going to fucking find my body. And we talk to each other like once every week or two weeks. And and so he's not going to say, hey, Alex hasn't called lately. Uh-huh. You know, so I could just be, I could be sitting here rotting away. If I wasn't married, my wife would come home and go, oh, my God, Alex is dead. Hey, uh-huh. hey. So, you know, I, I, it's nice to know, however, that that's, you know, uh, yep. you know, that, that, uh, I, I'm, 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 I have this great fear of death, so let's not talk oh, about really? it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not afraid of being dead. I'm afraid of the, uh, when we get a heart attack or just, uh, you know, I'm crazy about that happening, I, but hopefully I, it'll be quick. I think, uh, I don't they, want my Bill Cro- Bing Crosby and I'm dead before I hit the ground. Yeah. Well, Bing Crosby, it, but why is it, you know, you would think. Okay, that if there was a God, which I don't believe in because of several different reasons. Number one, that he invented the prostate and put it where it, where it is. <laughs> he wants to fuck with you. Yeah, because, you know, anybody who's even in civil engineering would say, oh, well, you don't run the urethra through the prostate, which grows <laughs> grows large as you get older and cuts off the flow of the urine. You put the, the, uh, the prostate to the side of the urinary canal. Anyway. Yeah. If there was a God, both, yeah. if there was a God, he would have taken care of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he, he was. And, just, and the, the, the other part of this God sure. thing is, why is it that Bing Crosby was on a golf course in Spain, I believe, and he was playing a round of golf and just, I mean, literally, you know, one of those widow makers, you know, just dropped uh, to the ground and was dead. All right. Yep. There you go. Bam. Now that's it was a great. A, and his last words are, "It was a great game." The, the, what he, better last words can you have? Well, they say he played a great game that day. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, if it, there were a God, wouldn't Bing Crosby have died slowly because he was such a miserable human being? Yeah. Well, to his kids, you know, if you were a friend there, he'd like, "Hey, let me buy a drink, pal." You know, <laughs> terrible <laughs> to his kids. Terrible to his kids. <laughs> uh, you know, was a in many ways a, a miserable human being. All his yeah, life, you know, uh, 
and, and so consequently, uh, wouldn't you think that kind of guy, God would go, you're going slowly, pal. We're giving you the pain. Yeah. We're giving you pancreatic cancer. Okay. Uh, well, I think God loved the song Jimmy Valentine. So he gave b -b 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 easy to mind. Remember what he used to call one of his sons? Oh, bucket butt. Was it bucket butt or was it bubble butt? Was it bucket butt or was it bubble butt? Bubble butt or bucket butt or satchel ass. <laughs> Give him a bit part of Adam 12. He'll leave me the fuck it's alone. A great, if you ever get a chance, it's a great, uh, if you get like the PBS uh, app on your, on your TV or whatever, uh, PBS ran a documentary on uh, Bing Crosby. Uh -huh. And did his whole life, and you really realize what a great performer he was. What a uh, how great he was. I mean, he was oh, sure. he was the most uh, 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 well known person probably in the world at one point. Oh, he was singer, and then he did all his movies with Bob Hope. Singing, God, and he, you know, yeah, he he was good at everything. Okay, yeah. now uh, it goes through his whole life, and he uh, was in the beginning. This absolute player. I mean, Whiteman cut him out of a movie because he mm -hmm. kept showing up. He wound up in jail one day for drunk driving. Nah, you know, yep. He had no sense of responsibility at all in the early days. Uh -huh. And then well, one day he did. find him in the street passed out drunk. One or... day he did get, you know, he did come around and, you know, he had a career for himself. But, I mean, the yeah. guy, the guy was just... You, you watch the history of the guy, and he it's a, it's surprising he ever made it, you know, or that he lived. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, he was living so wildly in those early years. Sure, I got tired of barfing my brains out on Burbank Boulevard. Yeah. So uh, I went to school with a, uh, a, a girl by the name of Myrna Rinker. Uh, Myrna Rinker. And I remember Myrna. I can even see her in my face right now. When I was a kid, high school, Myrna Rinker. Uh -huh. And my father told me about Myrna Rinker's dad. And da his her dad was Al Rinker of Rinker, oh, yeah. Barris, and Crosby, the Rhythm Boys. Ah, the Rhythm Boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy feet. I got those happy feet. <laughs> I got that low down beat. They keep me going. That's a great song. It's Paul Whiteman. Sure. Go listen to it, folks. Anyway, Paul Whiteman, the orchestra, sure. That was he. It was Rinker, Barris, and Crosby. And they for the for a couple of years were were a uh, were a group, and then he just spun off and went on his own. Uh, but uh, so I went to school with Myrna Rinker. So How about that? eventually Al Rinker lived in Marin County. How's that? Okay. How about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, you know, uh, uh, Crosby was phenomenal. And I and until uh, you see this documentary, you don't realize how phenomenal, because uh, he was the first popular singer to embrace jazz. Uh -huh, as sure. you know, he he liked jazz, and so he he was the first singer that brought in that jazz sensibility. Sinatra then tried to be Crosby. Yeah, you know. the crooner and the swooner. Yeah, yeah, and 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 even uh, Sinatra would say that one of his, his greatest influence was Bing Crosby. So, uh, so to see them together in something like high society singing "Did You Ever" is really a treat. Uh, well, yeah, sure. Because Great this song. is this is the master to the son. You know, it's really, uh, really, sure. really yeah. cool. So, uh, yeah. what, what's uh, as we wind down here? What's new in the life of Stephen Pearl? Anything? Just well, absolutely nothing, and that's the way I like it. I'm working. I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, all week I'm working at Jokesters in the D Hotel, which is actually in Class A Hotel. Here in Vegas, I got a very busy April. I'm very happy about that. And from April 16th to the uh, what is it, the 27th, I'll be at the Eclipse Theater here in Las Vegas. And then after that, I go to Reno to work there for a week with the mighty Carl LeBeau. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh. And then who knows after that? All the of a sudden, continue. And on it goes this thing of ours. Let me ask you a quick question here before we say goodbye. Sure. How often did you work in the San Francisco Bay Area? Uh, maybe four times a year. <laughs> there's nothing going on. Really? There, man. Th that bad? No, nah, it's, it's just, they, well, there's a few gigs, and I did a few gigs, and they, they usually use the same three guys, and I'm not one of them, so, uh, but uh, you know, they had the Throckmorton Theater, which is great, and the Punchline maybe twice a year, which is great. I hardly worked, and uh, now I work all the time, and I don't have to cross any bridges or pay any tolls. So this I, Isn't uh, it amazing? Know, I like it. Uh, because when you said you were moving to Las Vegas, I went, well, I guess he's giving up. But you went to Vegas, and you're working. 
I can't believe I just I don't know what would happen. You know, we just it was cheaper to live here, and then like you know, I, it's great. I'm working on. They use the older guys, and I want them. So uh, you know, just do, do do a good job, and then I get these independent games. I did a thing in like a, this assisted living club, which I was worried about. That it was one of the best shows I ever did. They were cracking up and having a great time. It just there's work here, and they use the older people, and you yeah. get to see all your friends. Just just now. quickly, and, I I heard that then, Steve Kravitz has moved there. That's what I heard. He's in the hospital now, so he had his golf clothes removed. Oh, all okay. The golf. Well, so, hey, uh, listen. I don't know what he's doing. I'm, you know, I, I, I sent him a couple of get well messages, so hopefully uh, I'll see him when he's well, but I don't know what he's doing. So, uh, yeah. Well, we've run out of time here. No! Yes! Okay, I'll accept it. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, Stephen. All right, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. It's always great to keep it with you. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, and that's uh, that's uh, Steve Kravitz. <laughs> Stephen Pearl. <laughs> he meant we mentioned Steve Kravitz, so I, uh, you know, came up with the Stephen Pearl all of a sudden. Anyway, it's Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. That's who it is. All right. Okay. Do you notice we have some new uh, new promos here? Yeah, yeah. Mo- new imagers. Like, uh, l- just listen. He changed the wording. Five years and still talking. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's it. You know. That's it. Right. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the Skype lines here. It's not really so much turning them on anymore as making myself visible so that you can call. And uh, for those of you who, who hesitate to call um, because of, oh, I don't know, maybe a guy named Phil, uh, tonight it's an all clear. It's an all clear for Scott. It's an all clear for Tom. Uh, and I would love to have them call tonight uh, and be on our new looking panel, okay? Well, here we got Charlie Wallace is the first one in, and uh, let me just uh, uh, take him and put him on my, uh, uh, my thing here. Let me put Charlie there. Okay, all right, and let's, uh, let's see what happens. Come on, Charlie. Oh, wait a minute, we're... Where where is it? It's supposed to be. Come on, I just I just put Charlie Wallace on here, and he should be coming up. But his picture is. Oh, there it is. Okay, you were just having some trouble getting your picture to come in on time. Hello there, Charlie. Yeah, it was acting weird. You're the first one on the panel tonight. Oh boy. You have the first okay. slot. You have the coveted first slot, <laughs> as it were. So, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. It's a yeah. Gorgeous day today. Yeah, it was a gorgeous day today, and guess what? I didn't go out, <laughs> <laughs> but it was gorgeous. So you know, yeah. I uh, I uh, uh, it it was. Uh, I looked outside and I said, "It looks very nice." Um, it says I have a poor connection, or you have a poor connection, but I don't care. It looks like it's coming through okay. Yeah, now we're okay. Get- we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you, you see, the new Skype tells you when you have a poor connection. Isn't that wonderful? I hate them. I just hate them. Uh, how do you like the new Skype? Well, I like that the picture is so sharp. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, the picture is sharp. That's that's for damn sure. Uh, and, but now here's where we wait for other people to call and fill up the screen. See, I, I, I created a problem for myself here with this new-looking GabNet panel. Now, you won't see this if you call on Skype because the Skype feed doesn't look like this. But I have created a situation in which there are now two empty spots here right now. And if I go over to uh, my eight uh, thing, it's even more so. So, you know, uh, it's like... Uh, uh, a real problem. Oh, here, here's somebody calling. Who is it? Oh, what do you know? Uh, it's uh, uh, Scott Boddicker. And uh, let me uh, go down here and put Scott in here. Um, let me see here. Uh, wait a minute. Yes. Well, I, I, I've got, I've got, 
Scott in there, but I don't see his, um, his name doesn't come up. Okay, there's Michael Klein. We'll add Michael Klein to the group. Uh, let me see here. There's Michael Klein. <laughs> Let me hey guys. Yeah. let me go. Let me cancel that out, and let me go to here. Okay, now let me look here. There we go. There's Scott Boddicker. Okay, and uh, I've got to do. Uh, um, I need to see. get some lighting. Uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, we get Mike in there. Okay, and then we put them in here and here, and then I push this, and there they are, folks. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that just beautiful, folks? The people who are watching doing the citizen panel don't see this unless they look at YouTube. But have you seen our new picture, uh, Scott, that we have for the Yes, panel? it's lovely. Isn't it good? Yeah. What do you mean? It's yeah, come on, sound more enthusiastic. <laughs> than, uh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Well, well yeah. somebody was making fun of the backdrop you had on there, the blue back. But what's, I think it's lovely. What's wrong with the backdrop? I yeah, it's great. I stole, no, I stole, that, I stole it from that some. That thing was making fun of it. I thought, who? Yeah, so. Who was? And yesterday or Monday or what is today? Oh, Wednesday. Oh, are these the people who chat behind my back? Is that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We say nasty things about you all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't like the, uh, you didn't like the, uh, uh, the, the looks of the thing. And yeah. uh, let me see here. Uh, I forget your name. I, f I'm terrible. Uh, Mike. Mike. Thank you, Mike. I'm sorry. See, I don't. My, my problem is I don't have names anymore uh, to be able to uh, see who they are. Actually, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it by looking at at Skype. Yeah, Mike Klein, Michael Klein. Yeah. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm getting ready for a trip to NAB, which I know you've been there before. Years ago, I used to go to NAB with uh, first with uh, new, well, sometimes new tech, but later on with uh, Play Incorporated, and we would just hang there at NAB and show our stuff. And did you hear that new tech got purchased? What? Yes, new tech is now owned by a company called Vizrt or VizRT. Really? It just it just happened last week. How much did they pay for it? Did they say? I did not see that info. But uh, so I'm Kiki, Kiki now belongs to a big corporation. A big corporation. Well, you see, the thing is, I, uh, um, I'm using now to get these pictures on here a thing called NDI. Yeah. Which is a new tech product. Well, this is why Vizard bought uh, new tech is for the I, you know, video over IP. Yeah, the NDI. Yeah, and uh, I don't exactly understand what the video over IP is, but I'll accept it. Okay. Well, that's NDI. NDI is video over IP. It's sending yeah. video over right an IP address. Well, yeah. this is the way in which we're able to take every individual caller and control them on the screen, and it's a new tech product. And last night, in honor of that, I wore one of my new tech T-shirts mm. uh, from their Christmas party like 20 years ago. <laughs> And uh, uh, but uh, I'm sorry that they got bought up from by somebody because this is a free product and they're probably going to try and try start charging for it. You know, I but hope not. How can we how can we charge for this damn thing? You know, so uh, who knows? No, I, I use NDI, too, when I was doing my podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I noticed my am I, is my video stuttering a little bit of me moving around. Oh, you yeah. full motion. Full motion, really on on on, on, on the return. I don't well, know. What I'm, is I'm talking about I'm talking about YouTube. It seems to be uh, yeah. There's a little stuttering on the YouTube world. Yeah, I don't understand. Actually, that. I'm frozen on YouTube. Hmm. Well, uh, this is not YouTube. This is uh, oh, wait. what I'm talking about. I'm, well, the... I'm looking at the YouTube feed, but it's delayed. So that's yeah. well, yeah. I don't I don't care. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I don't. It's care. fine. It's fine. Well, this is the one going out on YouTube. I mean, going out on YouTube. Are you looking at the one on YouTube? I'm looking at YouTube. It's beautiful. Yeah, and I'm Except it's bigger than the rest of us. I don't like that. I know. Am, I, <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I smooth enough, at least? Uh, do I oh, you're, 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 you're so smooth. You're so smooth. You should be black. You're so okay. smooth. Well, anyway. <laughs> so let's talk about these subpoenas. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the subpoenas. Yeah. Yes. So, are they, now that Phil's not here. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm wondering if uh, if they're going to be able to get him to give up the, the uh, stuff early, uh, or whether he'll just keep stalling. Well, he'll put up a fight. He'll put up a fight, and then it'll be the middle of uh, of April, and then uh, everything will be fine, you know. <laughs> but I, I'm really upset that he wants to wait till 2020 for his health care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our health care needs to be fixed now. Well, well, he, well he, he's waiting for 2020 for the health care because he was told by uh, Mitch McConnell, uh-uh, we're not, we're not going through that whole health care thing again, <laughs> you know. Plus, no, they get crucified in 2020. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the one thing that can make him look terrible, you know? Right, um, right. And, um, I, I, you know, so uh, what the hell, you know? Uh, it makes him look terrible. And uh, the Democrats came back with a good thing, and that was, well, okay, so you've got another plan for health care? Where is it? You know, you have <laughs> oh, they're working got on it. it. Yeah, we're working Been on it. Been working on it for 10 years. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're working on it for 10 years. <laughs> right. So, you know, I, I just, uh, I don't understand, really. You know what I'm thinking is I'm, I should move my Skype in front of me here. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, uh, because then I can see, I can talk to you directly, and it looks a lot better. Although it'll look a lot better if I went this way and looked that way, but then I can't see at all. So, you know, because there you're all over here. Maybe I should put you. Oh, maybe I should move everybody over to this side, this side over here, and then well, when I'm where looking, your camera is. You just want to put the Skype interface right underneath the camera. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, anyway. Uh, it, it, it looks like you're looking to the camera. So. It looks like I'm looking to the camera. Okay. Well, that's what, like that's what I'm doing. I mean, because the Skype windows is right underneath the camera. Well, so. let me see if I put the Skype. Well, no, the, I, I put the Skype there. I don't. I it, it it covers what I'm doing actually. So that's a problem. This is all something, folks, that we're trying to get used to. It's a whole new uh, thing we're doing. So anyway, uh, where was I? So we're going with the subpoena thing. I think he's just going to stall on the subpoena thing. And then finally, April 15th, he'll give them the subpoena and they'll go, oh, it's nice to see your subpoenas, uh, P- uh, your subpoena. <laughs> subpoena. <laughs> That's a huge subpoena you got there. That's, uh, I got the largest. Uh, yeah, well, I, I hear it's a mushroom subpoena, but, you know. I, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, how, how long can he legally stall a subpoena? Well, I think he can, you know, he can go to court and say, I don't want to give it up yet. And he can play a bunch of legal games, which could take a couple of weeks. And then he's got, it's just, it's time that he's going to turn it over anyway, but he's going to turn it over redacted. And what they want it is unredacted. Okay. But he's so. been, he's, they, they, they've been, it's been proven that he no longer is under an audit, right? So that's a BS yeah. thing. Yeah. It was BS to start with. I mean, he, there's nothing in being audited that says you can't release your tax return. Exactly. So mm-hmm. what's what's stopping him? What what legal grounds do he have to not give it up? You, you so, heard today's news, right, about the uh, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. What? He, he, he uh, wrote a letter to the IRS mm-hmm. re- requesting six years of Trump's taxes, and they have to give it to him by law. Yeah. from a 1924 law as a result of the teapot now, dome my, stuff. My, my question is, why do you think that Trump doesn't want you to see his taxes? Why would you think? I'm thinking it's not because there's anything illegal in them. I'm thinking it's because, and this is a very simple oh. reason, uh, he doesn't want you to know that he doesn't have any real money. All right. right. Okay. Well, I, I think that's part of it, but I think it's also the people that he's done business with are probably uh, Russians and Saudis. And well, it and doesn't I matter if he does business with those people as long as he hasn't done business with people that are on the "don't do business with these people" list. Okay, if he has, then there's a problem. You know. Yeah. Well, that's that's a pretty serious. Uh, allegation that could be brought out in those tax returns. Well, I think that I think why they want the tax returns is so they can say he ain't no billionaire, pal. In fact, he owes money. You know, 
I think that's pretty much common knowledge now, right? Yeah. Well, we would think it was common knowledge, but it's not common knowledge. These yahoos out in the hinterlands think this guy's a multi-billionaire. Yeah. You know, and uh, when we find when they find out that Donald Trump may not be richer than they are, you know, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a bit of a of a shock to the uh, uh, great white underbelly of America. Well, they still think he's a genius too. So, well, yeah. uh, that's that's. Uh, I think he's a. Fucking he's a stable genius. Get it right. No, I, stable. Thank you. That was the word. <laughs> I, th I I think he's a genius. I think. I mean, how else did he win that goddamn election for crying out loud? <laughs> I you know? agree. Well, that's, and that's why he's going to win in twenty twenty. As much as I hate to say it, I I think there's enough uneducated people that will vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean, yeah, I I I. I uh, it, well, to begin with, and I got to say this, and uh, by the way, lines are open, folks. You know, we can take, you don't have to, uh, if, you're, if you've thought about calling the program and you wonder how you do it and you can't, you know, uh, you, you, you do I have to be a friend of yours and a contact of yours, you, I don't think you have to do that anymore. You just call us. And the, the Skype address, and I guess I should give it out, is GabNet Live. G A B N E T L I V E. When it says, Who do you want to call? Say Gabnet Live, and that will immediately start this Skype calling. And we'll then hear you. We'd like some new people. We'd like some fresh blood uh, so that we can fill up. I mean, I made one of these templates so I can fit 12 people in and a dog. And a dog. And a dog. <laughs> This is Penny. She's she's been on Gabnet before. Every everybody likes to show their pets. Ah, here comes Jeff Stein. So that means we're gonna have to go to our next uh, uh, thing here. Hold on a second. Where's Jeff? Uh, Let me see. Another here. preset. There, there we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Stein and Tom Yamaguchi is calling. So we have to uh, also go over, okay, and uh, get another space for, uh, let me see here, Jeff, uh, for Tom Yamaguchi. There we go. Okay. This is just a little bunch of stuff I got to do, folks, so that you can suddenly look over and see that we... So is this, uh, is this Skype you're doing this yeah, with, or is it a yeah. different software? That's what happens. You know, um, uh, 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 Tom is, is just square. He's not wide, so he's ruined my uh, my <laughs> symmetry here. But that's okay, Tom. Mm. Uh, Alex, is this Skype software you're using or a different software that does this? Uh, this is a thing. I I use a thing called OBS Studio. Always oh, yeah. have. Okay. Yes. Uh, but the thing that brings everybody in is a thing called we talked about it before NDI. Each of you are a separate picture. Okay. But uh, so if Tom doesn't look in, sym in symmetry, oh, wait a minute. He just hung. Oh, there. no, he's. I've turned my camera off and back on again. No, I think you're just not, uh, you're not wide. Is what I'm the not problem wide. Is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's the problem I've got here? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, I got to go over to six. And where do I go to the top here? Uh, number four is supposed to be Jeff. Okay, and it isn't. It's uh, it's you. Uh, I got two of J Tom Yamaguchi. Uh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Come on, come on. Where are we? Four has got to be. We got Jeff two Stein. Yamaguchis now. Oh, what I the see heck? Yamaguchis. Come okay. on, okay. Jeff Stein. There mm -hmm. we go. Now there. Hold on. There we go. We got Jeff Stein. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna get this down eventually. <laughs> you know. But we had two Yam Tom Yamaguchis there for a while, and I think that was good. You know, that can't hurt, <laughs> in spite of the fact that he's a square. Does uh, he does he charge extra for two or? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but you get a happy ending, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, well, I'll tell uh, Robert Kraft. Tom, what do you think of the subpoena? Uh, well, I, th I think you're you're right. I think he's going to stall as. Uh, as much as he can and uh it's sort of ironic isn't it you know how they were saying oh we want to we got it all released it's it's okay we got it released and then when <laughs> they actually come down to it yeah 
nope, we don't want it. Obviously, the person who doesn't want it released uh, immediately is Trump. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, Trump could just say to his attorney general, release the whole damn thing, the hell with it, you know? Sure. You know, I want you to, to, to do that. And um, uh, they, they, they aren't. So. <clears throat> what the hell, you know? Um, it, it's it's uh, it's not uh, it it's terrible. It's just terrible. But uh, we, what are we going to do about it? You know. So let let them let them play their little games, and you know we're living in a banana republic now, and who cares? Yeah. Well, I care. <laughs> you care. Yeah. I care. You know, I, I I refuse to accept. I refuse to accept this as normal. I've been thinking. Um, do you remember the movie Bullworth? Yeah. 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 Sometimes I'm thinking that so much of what's going on is is like Bullworth. I mean, it's like they're I mean, this this person is a loon, you know, raving lunatic. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to pretend that there's nothing wrong. Right. Everything is okay. Everything is normal. Mm -hmm. You know. And it's not. Yeah. The emperor has no clothes. Right. How, how is it possible to get cancer from a the sound of a windmill? Or <laughs> wind, I, 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 no one's explained that to me. I missed that one. What was that about? I think we, I think we have to watch Alex Jones to to, uh, to get that. Look, look who just joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you move your camera just a little bit uh, so that we get your full face in the picture, Tony? Can't you see your face there? <laughs> There, it's a young there Bob we Rupin. go. That looks better. Nice. Yeah, that better. That's good. That's fine. Um, the um, uh, here's the question. You know, everybody's saying, "Well, it looks like Trump's going to win the next election." I don't. Well, I mean, I'd like to think that America's not that stupid, and that somehow, you know, we'll get around these uh, electoral college stuff, and we'll play the game right out there. But my question is this: Who can beat Trump? Now, don't give me some, you know, out of the blue person, because we need somebody who can effectively, effectively win against Trump. Tony. Uh, what? Biden. I vote for Biden. You vote for Biden. Really? Uh, oh, okay. I don't know that I agree with you. I mean, I know you you like Biden, right? I think a lot of people like Biden. Um, I I you know I like Biden, and I I like his moxie. Okay. Uh, but I, he gets along with both sides of the aisle. I got a, I got a, I got a problem with the age. Yeah. Uh, I I. I think that, you know, you got to remember that the last couple of presidents were not the old people. They were younger people. I mean, Bush was a younger guy when he became president. And, of course, Obama was a child by comparison to most presidents. Uh, and I think that's the way the world is going. So and you I think, think young blood is, is going to... I, I, right? I think some young blood or somebody who's really good. I mean, Obama was really good, but nobody knew much about him in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So they had to learn about this guy, and they paid attention to him because he was fresh blood, you know? So he became, and then he spoke well, he looked great, he had a lovely family, he had all the things you needed to be a stealth candidate, and I think that's why he won. Um and I don't know that Biden fits that category. I and certainly mm -hmm. Bernie uh, doesn't. And I know Charlie's going to be a little pissed off at me when I say that, because <laughs> Charlie's a you know is a uh, um, um, uh, uh, you know a fan of uh, a, a, a fan of. Uh, of uh, uh, well, I guess Bernie. Beto Bernie. Beto O'Rourke would be the next on the list, right? I don't like Beto O'Rourke. Yeah. I just there's something that just doesn't ring right with me on him. I like Mayor Pete better huh? than Beto. I like Mayor Pete Buttigieg better yeah. than uh. But I don't yeah, know anything yeah, about yeah. Mayor Pete. I've heard his name, but yeah. I don't know about him. What what you should do is probably explain who the hell he is. 
uh, because uh, let me see here. I gotta get uh, gotta get somebody else in here. Hold on a second, because Patrick we've is been in the joined house. by Patrick Blazik, and uh, let me see here. What is Patrick's? What name does he use? Uh, 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 huh? Darth. Darth. No, it's Darth Pat. I think is what it is. Yeah, I think that's what it is. There it is. Papa Fett. And, and uh, if I just do this, you'll see that Patrick is there. Okay, we've we're starting to fill up our 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 next uh, pattern here. So, hello, Patrick. Hello. Yeah. What? It, let me let me ask you this about Biden. As long as we were talking about Biden, what do you think about what they're doing to him right now? Um, I, I just had a conversation with somebody on Facebook about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing to him makes mm -hmm. me believe more in mm -hmm. how um, Vice President Pence conducts himself by not having dinner with women mm -hmm. without the wife present. Because it seems like even just if, if you would see somebody in pain or something like that mm -hmm. and you'd walk to him and want to put your hand on your shoulder and say you know there's something i can do i'd be afraid to do that i don't know i mean shit like what's going on with biden mm -hmm. and I, the me too movement has really really ramped everything up mm -hmm. into the stratosphere where just general what used to be normal mores of comforting somebody or you know hey how you doing is now to be construed as some sexual horseshit so i think you're getting um a raw deal i'm sure there's a few of them in there that were perhaps inappropriate but then again when did they happen but they keep I saying this word uncomfortable like that's a crime well it, i don't buy you know i don't think uncomfortable counts I consider grabbing her by the pussy counting. Okay. Right. I think that she, she made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, Kissing somebody who doesn't want to be kissed. Did you see some of the videos they showed? Oh, well, what? I saw a photo of that same woman who was accusing him of uh, encroaching on her space. She was had her hand on him on a photo. Yeah, but, but like, for instance, there was this picture they showed, look at him with that little girl, how lecherous he is with that little girl. And what he was doing is what I think anybody of his age kind of being grandfatherly and paternal would do. He leaned down and kissed her forehead. What was wrong with that? What's wrong it's with, not a, with sexual assault? It's not sexual assault. I mean, let's leave the sexual assault stuff to Harvey Weinstein. I mean, let's not minimize what he did by saying that Biden is a pervert. Tom, what do you think about all of this? You've been following Tom? this, haven't you? Yeah, and uh, and it's a whole bunch of silliness, mm. but that's. That's what we've come to expect in these early election seasons. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, in the next, you know, next few months, it's not going to make any difference to, to anybody. Yeah. It's just that they're going, they're they're going through all these silly little diversions instead of talking about the real issues that really, really are, are important. I mean, nobody, yeah. you know, we need to talk about climate change. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, we have at least one candidate who's made that the, the uh, centerpiece of his campaign, and that's uh, Jay Inslee. Right, but right. Otherwise, if, if we let the media go, do what it wants to do, it, it's, it's going to just continue to do that. It's going to look for all the silly things. Right. Uh, that's that's going to juice everybody up. Right. So uh, my question is, um, yeah. uh, and, and uh, is, is, who do you think was responsible for getting this whole thing going? See that? Uh, Can about I ask Biden? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, by the way, let me I, say I let me say to everybody who's on the panel: if you want to see one of the other people talking that's in the bubble when they're talking, you can just take them and drag them down into the picture, and they will show up there. I don't and, know why they only give you a choice of four. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm glad I have eight on the screen right now, including Vernon Nunn, who has joined us. Thank you, Vernon. Oh. 
There he is. He's re he's relaxed. Uh, he uh, he wrote me a very nice note today about the look of the new uh, citizen panel. And it does look good. I'm pr very yeah. proud of it. Anyway, as you were say, uh, uh, what, what I was oh. saying, what yeah. Who 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 do you think? You know what? Somebody's response. What? What's alarming to me is two of the women that came forward, I believe, Tom might be able to verify this, were Democrats. Do you think the Democrats are trying to concoct this whole well, thing to I, get him out I of the picture? I, what, Patrick, you got your hand up. Do you have a suspect? Yeah, I, I think it, it's Bernie supporters. Yeah. Are trying to, they're, they're trying to clear the field for him. And I will say this, um, and I think Jack Bishop would support my uh, what I'm going to say. This is war. This is how it is. And and if you're going to play dirty, even within the party, and that and you know that's the way it is. So the Republican did the same thing. We ended up with that clown, Trump. Yeah. So you can end up with some idiot too, uh, if if you guys don't watch what you're doing and how you're playing. But this is politics. Yeah. How, uh, do you you think it's Bernie, Charlie? Defend Bernie. I mean, defend Bernie. I mean, he can't control what somebody out in New Mexico is going to say. Well, she's but not it, even on his staff. She's just somebody that was there's a Bernie supporter that decides to come out and say this. Do you think uh, Bernie no could have anything to do with it? No, I don't think Bernie had anything to do with it. I think it's been proven that Bernie has no control over the Democratic Party. Sure, yeah, but they pushed him out. Yeah. Uh, by the way, when people suddenly get a little lapse in their picture every now and then, folks, you see that ugly Skype logo pop up. That's what that is, okay? Um, but uh, otherwise, we have a very stable picture. None of the pictures are changing shape like they were the other night when we first tried this out. And I'm still trying to get used to it to do it in such a way that it's almost transparent to the rest of you. Um I wonder I why Vernon isn't 16 by 9. He's got a square. Is it his camera? No, well, no. I don't know if Vernon is not square here. He's got a wide screen here. The only person who's square is Tom. It's Tom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Tom? Yeah, Tom. Middle. Uh, the middle, that's, uh, Tom, uh, that's Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Wave, yeah. wave, Tom. So, yeah, what, Tom. So that I don't know why he's square. What do you yeah. think about the whole, the whole thing with the... Uh, um, you know, calling him a pervert, you know. Who called him a pervert? Uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 God damn it. My mind is just so bad today. I, Who called him a uh, to, Who called him a pervert? Well, they, they keep saying that oh, they felt uncomfortable with him uh, 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 doing whatever to him. Uh, invading their space. Invading their space. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go stand next to Trump. Yeah, I feel I feel he's been in, uh, invading my space for the last couple of years. Oh. You know. Uh, let me see here, Kevin Stopper. Where is uh, Kevin? There's his name. Okay, there we go. See and, if we can max you out. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I this now is what we call. What is it we call this usually? I'm most full house. Most, house. A, a full house. And wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got a little. I got a little fun for you here. Here we go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's a full house. There we go. If you look on the true, uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, YouTube. YouTube, 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 <laughs> YouTube. In about thirty seconds, we have a picture of a full house. So that, that. that was what we did. Oh, Man, I yeah. can't. My mind is mush today. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can shove more in there, can't you? You know what I don't like Be about Beto O'Rourke. Kevin's here. They, they were they were they were asking Beto O'Rourke about this today, uh, and he said, "Well, you know, uh, I respect women who come forward on this kind of thing." Of course he would. You know, he's such a he's such a weaselly little evil little <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, I don't like him. Huh? He's Donny Osmond, I call him Alex. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect. Skeezy Osmond. Yes, uh, Patrick. It's the 
you guys are experiencing what we did on our side. I mean, we had weasels on our side trying to talk shit about other ones and defend and it, 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 it welcome welcome to the Republican Party of this year. You know, I yeah. mean, he's a, I always thought he was a weasel anyway. He looked like a weasel and standing on countertop where people are eating yeah. is a bit over the top. Yeah, but don't stand on a table where people eat. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but the, but when I heard him today, when they said, what do you think about the Biden situation? He didn't answer it by saying, well, you know, I don't think that this is the kind of thing that comes into the qualifications of a Harvey Weinstein or anything like that. This is, you know, this is a, a question of affection, perhaps. Uh, but uh, instead, he threw him to the wolves. I mean, he said, well, you have to admire women for coming forward on this sort of... Fuck you, Beto O'Rourke, you motherfucking cocksucking asshole. <laughs> you know, so uh, right, well, off, really is- right off Beto, and r- for me, and right off uh, <laughs> Kirsten Gillibrand. Cause that, oh, yeah, she's cause, running around being holier than thou, too. Because yeah. that cunt threw f- Al <laughs> Franken to the wolves. I mean, yeah, she did you right about that. She ate oh. our own, okay? Yeah. And I really shouldn't use that word because I only say that of people I really like, okay? So, you know. Um, Tell us what you really think, Alan. That's what I really Alex. think. That's what I really. Well, didn't you find that what she did to <laughs> Al Franken was a little, you know, a little screwed up? And Franken, I yeah. think I what think. he did, Franken's I think Franken's a pussy. No, I don't think Franken was a pussy at all. Yes, he was. He should have fought it. No, he wasn't a pussy. He wasn't a pussy. He was doing the one thing I think he felt he had to do, and that was say, fuck it, I don't need this shit. Okay? Yep. You know, I don't, am I right, Kevin? You agree I believe that? so, because in that whole thing, you knew that that stuff was old. It was set up. It was it was a it was a typical uh, comedy setup type thing. Yeah. And it wasn't what the other shit was. And he said, "I'm not going to go through all this bullshit." And said, "Fine, have your way, bitch," and left. Right. Right. You know, it wasn't like all the other shit. Wait a minute, did we lose somebody? I think. Uh, oh no! What, what, what the heck is that? I, I don't know. Vernon sent something. Did you send something, Vernon? Vernon? Yeah, I was kind of, I was not looking to, but I did. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, what I tell people to do with the new Skype is don't touch anything. Okay. <laughs> the only thing you should do is maybe move those bubbles down into the into the main frame so that you can see somebody who's talking. Although you can see them in that tiny little bubble, which somewhere over at Skype there are some, uh, ba- you know, guys who write code jerking themselves off, saying, "Well, look what we can do: circles." You know, it's annoying motherfucker. I wish they had the dynamic view on there so that whoever's well, talking would you know, pop up there. You know what? I wish they would give you, you if, if uh, Skype is listening, if you want to do the right, right by everybody, what you do is give them a choice of the way they want to configure their screen. Yeah. If they want everybody on the screen at the same time like in the old days, give them that option. It's mm-hmm. up to them. Or if they want it this way so that they don't have as crowd. What happened? I just lost uh, somebody Siri screened. Oh, oh, who did that? Who did that? Who did that? Well, we're that, back again. No, I, we're not back again. You know what you can do, folks? I think you can move people down into the. No. Uh, huh? Don't who, touch anything. Who did that? Who did it? You screwed me up. Whoever did that. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't do it. Let me see here. Um, uh, uh, is it, it's Charlie. Charlie did it. <laughs> no Charlie. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Everybody just came back. It looks fine. Who? No, everybody came back finally. Finally, uh, what happened was somebody did something that uh, forced uh, 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 this whole thing to go bazonkers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh shit! I think huh? Jeff left. I think Jeff left. Jeff left. Oh, was it Jeff? No, it wasn't Maybe Jeff. Jeff, again. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, are you there? Jeff's there. No, he's frozen. He's frozen, and Jeff's again, here. again, we've got this. Okay. We got this problem with 
what is this? Oh, this is really screwed. God damn you. I hate Skype. <laughs> no, what it is is I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get rid of I'm trying to get these people. I mean, I'm looking at YouTube and everything looks good. No, but, but what's happening on screen is it, as long as I keep this like that, 9 of 10 in the call, but the problem is is this plus 4 uh, and I don't want that. Uh, and let me move. Yeah, I'm, I'm not touching nothing because my yeah, iPad's yeah, all Yeah, I'm trying to get I two can't. more people in there, and they're in there now, I guess. I've got no, they're three not. Three bubbles. Two, one of them has a plus two, and well, I can't how see. Do you, how do you get the plus two to show you all the people in the plus two? I don't know. I I don't know. Uh, it just, when I touch it just looks two, good on YouTube right now. Huh? No, but it isn't good on YouTube because what happens is it goes to a Skype logo, okay? It keeps for flickering. The, for those two. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is really bullshit. I ain't touching you know? nothing. <laughs> Don't touch nothing. I can't see Patrick. All I see I, is his yeah, Everyone hold their hands up. <laughs> I don't want those plus two, though, up there. I don't like that. Hey, Kessler, yeah. I'll, send you, I'll send you a nude picture of me through uh, no private. How about that? that? You don't have a nude picture of anyone else, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the problem with this? Why two, can't, three, well, four? Well, how can three, you five, get six. Yeah, but how can you get the two people to be both people out there as a bubble? See, I can I, don't do, know. I can do it now. It's never, it's never been like that for me on the on the on the iPad, so I don't know. Everything Once I back up into my studio, I can see it, but there's more yeah. bubbles. But on the iPad, there's only been like two bubbles, and then a plus whoever you, else is over you. there. Uh, actual Alex, size. Are you talking in? on the Skype in general? Yeah. You see a plus two? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Skype. Yeah. Well, go, go to that little gear thing. Right in the center of your screen, and you click on that, and you can go to something called Float. Float? Yeah. Well, now I don't have that. Go to Window, maybe. or Okay, yeah. well, Window? Yeah. It's on Float, and now it's on Window. Did it disappear? No. no. Plus no. two? I go Float, and it doesn't get rid of the plus two. Uh, and as soon as I, uh, if I hold my thing over plus two, it'll show me the two. You know. Uh, oh boy. Well, I'll check I'll it out. I was able plus to. Two if my cursor is in the Skype box. If the cursor is out of the Skype box, I see all the pictures. Oh, real? There we go. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. That show me. See if I move it in the picture. Watch the two people will turn into Skype or something. I don't know. Anyway, well, pick out my background. I'd Are you a... there, Jeff? By the way, Jeff, I don't see him. <laughs> yeah, I don't see him either. Jeff looks frozen in the YouTube. Oh, oh yeah, there he uh, is, YouTube. Yeah, but I don't see him on. Uh, he's I don't not see in him. Skype. No, and he's not in Skype. What happened to Jeff? I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, let me see. Did that happen to me last week? Towards the end of the show, you guys thought I was there, but I was not. I was I was kicked off, and then I tried to dial back in, and I could hear everybody, but yeah. you guys thought I was there, and I wasn't. And I wasn't there the last 15 minutes of the show. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. See? And I kept trying to talk, and I couldn't, so I just bailed out, and and I was frozen the last 10 minutes of the show, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so I that owner of Jeff is like that. Is he there? Hello, see. Jeff. No, Jeff's, Jeff. Jeff's in, not Jeff. there anymore. So wait a minute. Let me put Kevin in that uh, in that uh, in that square. Uh, uh, Kevin, come on. Where I, 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 I you guys I, see how I was able to blur my background in the settings? That's kind of cool. No, wait a minute. Kevin, 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 Kevin. Stopper. There we go. Now I go okay, <laughs> and it should. There we go. And I'll do that. Okay. So now Kevin's in Jeff's place. I'm learning how to do this, folks. Excuse me. You know. <laughs> I don't know. What Alex, I'm... you see how I was able to blur my background? Oh, really? That's a oh. setting in on... Uh... Oh, excuse me. I, I <laughs> actually have to go to the 8. There we go. All right. If you go to settings and then audio video settings, there's a checkbox to blur background. Oh, really? 
And look at that. That's pretty cool. Well, how do, how, yes, you. It, it, but now my question is: Is it blurring? Yes, it is blurring itself on. Uh, uh, on. Uh, um, well, they're probably jerking themselves off at Skype over that one too. You know. <laughs> How'd you do that, Mike? I'm sorry. If, By if the way, folks, the, the, if, if go you... to the wheel, the settings wheel, and then audio video settings, and then there's a switch that says blur my background. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I... Cool. Oh, good. Everybody's going to blur their fucking background now. <laughs> hey, we got to take advantage of the new technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Charlie. Blur your background. <laughs> well, I'm not messing with anything. I can't blur my background because this is not uh, coming off Skype. My picture isn't coming off Skype at all. So. Oh, yeah. You put your hand back there. It blurs. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. 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 Ah. yeah. So now you can have naked women dancing around back there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so my question is, I mean, who, who are the Democrats going to run? Who's going to be the uh, great white hope for the uh, uh Republic uh, for the Democratic Party. I have a big crush on Kamala Harris. What about Kamala Harris? I have a big crush on her. Oh, you have a big crush on her. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Not just physically, but I mean, I think she's a brilliant woman. I uh, I happen to like her a lot. Uh, and I hate to say this because the Me Too movement will come after me, but I don't have a career. Uh, so it doesn't really <laughs> matter. Uh, I think she's hot. You know, yeah. I mean, compared to. You know, I mean, well, Elizabeth Warren? It, it compared to Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I was going to no, say no, that. Wow, we haven't even mentioned her name yet. Pocahontas. We haven't even mentioned her name. I got to tell you something about um, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Please help me tonight. My brain, I took I took a Xanax last night, and that makes me lose my memory. Uh, for, remind me never to do that again. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth Warren is a very smart woman. Yes, yeah. She's very bright, and she's very oh, smart. Oh. And if, if, if we were running somebody for president, everybody in America said, we want somebody who's really smart, which they're never going to do because they want somebody who's really st stupid. That's obvious, okay? Elizabeth Warren would be the winner. I mean, she, let's face it, she's, uh, she's terrific. But can yeah. she bring together both sides? Can she reach across the aisle? I think she's still polarizing. Oh, I think she's polarizing. I think uh, I think Bernie's polarizing. Biden isn't polarizing. Right. Republicans aren't interested in reaching across the aisle. Well, Obama tried to reach across the aisle. They bit his hand off. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And and Trump would reach across the aisle if there was a pussy to grab. So you know. Uh, <laughs> AOC. What? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, you know, uh, I can't even move. If I move my uh, home now, I move my cursor into the the thing, and I'm not having that problem. So, who knows what the problem is? It's freaky. It's yeah. yeah. Anyway, I I got to be careful. I have to be careful. Very very careful. Oops. Um, I just uh, I just I, I, you know I'm just worried that there's nobody out there that can beat Trump at his game. Now, you got to remember, he's playing a dirty game. So the person who's going to fight against him either has to be just as dirty in playing the game or has to be... Well, I, I think it's not dirty so much as media savvy and knowing yeah. how to play yeah. to the masses. Yeah, yeah. And I... they're buying everything he says. He can yeah. do no wrong, this guy. Yeah. And when he doesn't come through with it, they don't give a shit. Well, right? I, I mean, uh, Mexico's gonna pay for the wall. Oh well, we'll pay. We'll pay for it. Well, here, cool. this this guy is uh, again. I I used to say this is a joke, but I'm beginning to believe it's true. That I think his way of running the country and balancing the budget is to burn down the comp country and get the insurance money. You know. <laughs> Uh, because it, that's about what he's doing. I mean, this idea of closing the borders is absolutely insane. And everybody, you know, all, let uh, him do it. 
suffer the su consequences. But do you know what's not coming up? Do you realize, you know, girlfriend always says to me whenever I go to Costco and buy fruit, well, don't buy that fruit. It's all from Mexico, and you got to buy local, you know. And, and, and she's right. It, during the winter especially, most of the produce coming into the country is from South America. And uh, if you don't want your bananas, okay. You don't want your cherries, okay. You don't want your strawberries during avocados. the winter. Huh? Avocados. I love avocados. Or cars. Or cars or TV sets or any one of a number of things. This country, if he closes the... If he closes that, by the way, it also blurs out when you, I think, get too far in front. See that? See, your glass of wine is blurring out. Now, oh, why wow, is yeah. that? Why is that? Oh, it's just a yeah. circle, really. Fake depth of field. Yeah, uh, it's a circle. I don't know. Uh, you think it, what, yeah, that's probably what it does. It doesn't blur out the main image. You see, when you put it in the center, well, oh. stop it. Uh <laughs> No, when when you Michael, when you put it in the middle, it's fine. When you put it off to the side, yeah. because it's reading your body basically, it gets blurry. You see, yeah. Now, now my question is: Let's get away from politics for a second. We'll get back to it in a moment, folks. Why did they put that feature in Skype? For what purpose does that is that? You don't see the mess in my office. I guess. Or if your wife walks in naked, we're not going to see I, it. I, told, I just told my wife to walk through naked because I got it blurred. Uh, uh, let me see. Are you blurred? Cleared up. Too? I don't think she's going to do it, but here, I'll go find her. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. She won't be blurred that much. Oh, that's right. And if I took my clothes off right now, I'd be blurred, but that's just my body these days. You'd be alone is what you'd be. <laughs> this would be a one. Okay, I want to hear I want to hear from Tom. Tom, who's your choice right now? Who's who's I already told, I already told you. Oh, yeah, you did. Before that I will support the nominee of the Democratic Party. Yes, but, but I am willing to and I am willing to uh, trust the process. That we will have a good nominee after all the primaries are finished and the convention's finished. We will have a good nominee, and we can, <clears throat> and I will do everything in my power to to, uh, to work for that person. Well, um, no, do you no, think no, that no, nominee no. is here now? What's that? Do you think that nominee is actually running at the moment? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's a good chance it is. But when you when when we look back at the 2008 election, I mean 2006, 2007, we didn't know yeah. who was going to be. We you know, everybody was assuming it was going to be Hillary Clinton then. So so why why even waste our time trying to speculate so early in the process? Let the process play out, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Just relax. Yeah, just but, like, but like, just I, like, I, like, okay. like, I, like, I, like, I, uh, I, like Pelosi say, just relax. I understand <laughs> what you're saying, Tom. I understand what you're saying. And the fact is that we will all support, I guess, all the people here who are liberals, which is this whole panel tonight. Thank God. Patrick. Uh, <laughs> oh, not Patrick. Not Patrick. Michael. Patrick. I forgot. Patrick is uh, is one of one of the assholes. Uh, <laughs> and I say that, Patrick, it, what? Mr. Asshole. Mr. Asshole. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he, uh, no. uh, but, but the fact is that, that mo all the people who are Democrats here will support the Democratic candidate no matter who it is. But at this point, you've got to have a horse in the race. You know, that's what I'm asking about. Now, the other thing I want to bring up is are we a little pissed off at the fact that this whole presidential race has started already? I am. I, I mean, it's not a year yeah. till the first, I think the first primary, okay? And already yeah. MSNBC is doing a debate in June. It's less than a year to the first primary. Well, to be honest with you, it has never stopped because Trump's been on the trail since he started. Yeah, yeah. Trump's still trying to convince everyone he won. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, or that he's already won the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and his people believe him. 
He's uh, been rallying <laughs> since uh, the inauguration. You know, I'm really envious of the Brits in this area where they only have, what, a two-week election process? and well, Like three months. I think it's three well, months. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, you envy the Brits, but have you been seeing what's been going on with this yeah, yeah, Brexit? Yeah. I, I Brexit know. Thing? that one aspect, I envy the Brits. You know, uh, the, 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 the Brits are kind of having their own real problems, you know. Uh, but uh, the, the point is that I think that we should have a rule that we don't start even talking election till January 1st of the election year. And then everybody says, hey, I'm running and I'm running and I'm running. And then you go have all your stuff and then you go have your conventions and then you have your standard bearer and you have them run and you're over within nine months or uh, uh, 11 yeah. months, okay? Now, my suggestion also was that we do away with the primaries altogether and they just go to their conventions and decide who the guy person is going to be that's their nominee. You know, what, what are these primaries, what purpose do they serve? They co only cost the states a fortune. I can't imagine how much money it costs New York State every year to hold a, a every couple of years to hold a primary. Well, it's not that much. Just it's gives a, people it, more time to dig up dirt. It's enough. Also, how much money is it causing? Is it costing the people themselves? You know, uh, the uh, how much is it costing the the uh, the people who are running, and how much money do they have to raise? I mean, the only people that are getting rich off of all of this and who are benefiting by it are the TV, TV networks who get all this yeah. advertising. You know. And, and I just don't see where a primary is really important. Go to your convention, figure out who the standard bearer is going to be. Go fight it on the floor. That's the way they used to do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about some new idea in the beginning. What does it mean in 2019, in April, that you're ahead in the polls? What does it mean? Nothing. Well, but, but why are they ginning it up at this point? You know? It's money. It's it's yep. it's what gets the eyeballs and, on the. And that's TV why shows. I can't watch MSNBC these days because every time I tune in, they're talking about, oh, look at what Beto O'Rourke said today. Well, you know, in about a year, Beto O'Rourke is going to be an afterthought, just like he is with his parents. You know. <laughs> so, you know <sighs> I mean, I I just you know I really am. am bothered by it. how do you feel about that tom i mean i always go to tom well, because tom wait, is the voice of wisdom for patrick patrick set his hand up yeah for oh, oh i you know I, I i have a hard time a harder time seeing it with this new system yes patrick well i was gonna ask what is the point of the town halls that the democrats are holding it, it, it's same thing advertising right. sell advertising and, and the thing is the other people that will benefit from uh, this will be like my city, who is holding a Democratic convention mm -hmm. in 2020. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll make off with good money, even if there's you know. I hope you got 20 candidates then, because at least then the people will be there and be spending money. So I, I haven't watched a single one of these town halls, but has anybody mm -hmm. watched them? I watched a few. Okay. Do they have yeah. commercials in them? Of course. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then they they should be forced by law, make a law that you can you can do your little town halls and you can do your debates, but you can't run commercials. You know? And I'll bet in the one that MSNBC does two nights, by the way, because there are so many Democrats running. Two nights, they're gonna do that. And they say that it's uh, it, it, that uh, I, I'm wondering if they're going to run ads in in those uh, debates. I'll bet they do. And if they do, fuck them all, because that's why they're doing it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, and that's the problem. You know, news has become a business rather than a service. When it was a service, it was so much better. Yes, Tom, did you ever hand up? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, a lot of what you're talking about, I've already argued about before. I don't know if I feel like I'm going with the same arguments all over again. Yeah, well, but one of the problems right now with our media is so focused nationally that that's what all their their focus did is 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 a president. We had election uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. 
And you know what? Chicago has a lesbian mayor. Yes, well, I knew. I'm female. Oh, which, no, I'm well, sure. yeah, all lesbians are female, yeah. Wait a minute. But, what? A dyke? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Black. I was, by the way, folks, I was told by my lesbian friends that dyke is not a dirty word. Dyke is just fine. Yeah. We have In San Francisco, we have a contingent at the uh, Pride Parade called Dykes on Bikes. Yeah, right, I remember the Dykes on Bikes. Like Dykes on Bikes, yes. Uh, another thing that probably escaped people's notice was there is this, uh, in Pennsylvania, there was a state senate election. And uh, there was a... Uh, 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 suburban area of Pittsburgh mm. that was won by the Democratic candidate that in 2016 went big for Donald Trump. Oh. Oh, really? So these are the things that we, yeah. we should be looking at instead of, of, of the silliness that the media is giving us. Well, I don't, I don't know that the Chicago win is a, a precursor of uh, anything with the election because I believe they were, she was a, uh, she was a liberal. Right, the mayor. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. Was the other one who was running a, a conservative or a no, Republican? No. Or were they there both were two black women running against each and other? And were they both it's Democrats? The runoff. And were they both Democrats? I don't know. See, uh, I know. I think so. In California, that's possible because you had a Senate one, race in which there were two Democrats. Because one thing, a lot of these uh, mayor elections are are nonpartisan. Right. They're not. They ro don't run by party. They yeah. just, you know, uh, you know, who, the, whoever the top two was, they, they had a runoff between the two. Yeah. But yeah, in California, uh, we have a new primary system that uh, it could be two Democrats running against each other, two Republicans. Everybody runs. Yeah. And yeah. That's, the, that's the type of, of primary I like to what see. What you have is a run. Like well, let me like explain what they have in California is a runoff. And in the runoff, if, if, if in the runoff the two, uh, there are two Democrats who get the most votes, then they run against each other. And that's exactly right. what happened in California this time. Yeah. And I believe Kamala Harris won. Yes. Yeah. Here's the other question that I have to pose to you. Here are all these people running for president two years out, all right? Kamala Harris, senator from California. Elizabeth Warren, what is she? She's a congresswoman. Uh, senator. A senator. Oh, she's senator. 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 Massachusetts. From Massachusetts. Senior oh, senator. Uh, okay. Senator. All these different people all have certain offices that they have in most cases. What are they going to do for the next two years for their constituency? I mean, do, does does Elizabeth Warren still go to the Capitol and vote on everything? Does Kamala Harris go there and vote on everything? I mean, it, huh? Yeah. Cruz didn't. I mean, but they're always out running around giving speeches everywhere. When do they have time for their constituency? Yes, Tom. Well, I mean, yes, yeah, true. What, what people running for office, they will miss a lot of votes. But... They're, they're damn sure going to be there on the, for the important votes. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise they're sunk. Yeah. So because the people we will remind them of the votes they missed. So they're going to be there for for for, the, for all the votes that really count. By the way, if you guys raise your hands, please excuse me if I don't immediately go to you, uh, because I'm trying to get used to this whole new system. And to be able to see your little hands go up in a little picture I have here, like Tony. I can see Tony right now. Yeah. Yes, you know, I was just thinking back that election night when Trump won. When I came home, my brother had the TV on. He says, you're not going to believe it. He's winning. And I had such a, like, I like, I can't believe he's doing this. Like, I never thought he would win. That's why I, I'm starting to get worried. I think he might really win because I don't know if they're going to be able to run anybody if they're going to start eating each other out eating each other out is that what you said oh, you eat, said each other, eat each other up i got camera that's crazy. Uh, I got, yeah. turning against each other. I got Kamala. Yeah. I'm right. so turned on with Kamala. Okay, I'll feed him to you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, are they are the Democrats in a flux right now, Tom, that they don't really know how to shoot straight? No, no. I think I think I think we're 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 just putting too much too much into this. I, I think the actual you know, the the problem is that 
the if we have a let me have rephrase this. You know, one of the problems I think that I recognized now in 2016 was was not having as much competition yes. or trying to suppress competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what yeah. really hurt us. Yeah. I yeah. mean, in in the long run, it would have been better if we had a wide open field then, yeah. just like the Republicans had. I think I think I think it probably we would have had because remember in 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 2008 when 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 Clinton was running against Obama and everybody says oh they're going to rip each other apart and and and, and the Republicans are going to just slide right back off it didn't happen right so 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 I think that if we if we if we're smart if we you know if if we don't Get get ourselves too wrapped up in this chewing each other up. I think we can really use the process, the the primary process, to select a good candidate and vote for for that candidate in in, uh, in November. And, and they can learn from each other also. Exactly. Well, my but my 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 other question is going to be: Who do you think is going to be the first one to drop out of all these people? Julio Castro. Julio yeah, Castro, probably. probably. What's that guy with the name you can't even pronounce? No, no, no. He's great. He is. Well, he's, I saw him on. I saw him on Bill Maher. He was uh, quite good. Yeah, but great. I can't pronounce. The more I hear about him. Well, he's how, he's he's the mayor, though. Come on. Wait a minute. There's the uh, but Scott, do you know how to pronounce his name? Pete Buttigieg. Oh Are you sure, sure to pronounce that way? Buttigieg. 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 Who to judge? Who to judge? What? 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 Buddha shit? What? What's the name? Uh, yeah. He's too Buddha dropout. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That's not presidential. Uh, He's the guy from Colorado, right? He's no. from. No. no. Where's he no. from? Indiana. He's the mayor of he's some mayor city, of South, Bend. South Bend, Indiana, well, South Bend. and he's he he's probably was an immigrant from somewhere. He's young, he's young. He's only like 37, uh, 37 years, old. years old, and he's gay. Yeah, what? He's we gay. can't have a gay president. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Well, why not? We've got a cocksucker in the White House now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably floating around. Got a sociopath <laughs> now. America is not ready for a gay president. I still can't believe. Do you know he's something? You know what? One. Wait a minute. You know what they're? Which one? I have to think. But he was. Oh, did he? Say, wasn't Lincoln gay? <laughs> no, Lincoln wasn't gay. Not, not, no. Well, Lincoln was bi. Okay, but. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was the confirmed bachelor. No, wait a minute. But wait a minute. The gay president. Which one? Was, he was a bachelor, right? Yes. James yes. Buchanan. Yeah. Buchanan. Buchanan. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And he was not good looking. Well, that's why he wasn't married. Uh, well, they he, or he did, maybe he had a boyfriend. We don't know. I thought they said Lincoln was gay. There was the thing. Oh, there was somebody who wrote a book. Tony. I went to his house in Washington. But certainly, he, you, the the, you know. But how do we find these things out in retrospect? You know. Yeah. Are there? Oh, yeah. Are there? Any, the are there any people who go? Oh yeah, I I did them. You know. Come on. You know. And he was tall. I think they said right. Yeah. Yeah. Lincoln. Six four. Yeah, he was packing. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, he. Uh, 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 yeah, that's. Uh, okay. So it, what? It doesn't matter if he's gay or not. Yeah, no, it doesn't he's matter really if he's good. gay or not. No, it doesn't matter. But but would have, the only but, thing that bothers me is, you know. He's a he's a mayor, but. You know, if it was the governor, I'd have no. You know, I'd be I'd feel better if he was the governor. Okay. Yeah, but well, it, well it, it, that he doesn't have that kind of what we would call logistical experience that you get from being a governor. Governors make good presidents well, because still more experience than fucking Trump. Yeah. Look, exactly. Trump, exactly. Trump was yeah. a failed businessman. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I they say I didn't they they say, the they say if Biden falls out, the Bloomberg <laughs> might jump in. And I'd want to see Bloomberg jump in just to be able to look at Donald Trump and go, you call yourself a billionaire, huh? <laughs> Here's my bank account, motherfucker. Yeah. Let, let's just compare bank accounts, idiot. You know? 
in fact, as I say, once these uh, these taxes come out on Trump, I think we're going to find out that he's not really a billionaire, that he probably owes a billion dollars, you know, uh, and that he's glad he's president. Uh, but it's uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It, it's amazing this this whole. Uh, a comedy of errors we're involved in called the, called the United States of America. Yes. Uh, and I'm amazed by it. And I, I imagine you all are as well. So, you know. Uh, let me see here. Hey, wait a minute. Why, where, I'm missing somebody? Am I? How many people do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, nine. six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm, I, I should go over to my other... Uh, uh, Oh no 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 we we have no we only have uh, eight. Eight. Yeah, eight, hours, eight yeah. yeah yeah so we're fine. Well wait a minute I no I need to. What am I? Where are we? Who's who's not being shown? I Some, see eight. Who's on first? Somebody's not being shown. Tony's being shown. Uh, uh, Vernon's there uh, sleeping or whatever he's doing. I see I see eight people plus you. Yeah, eight people plus me. Oh oh you oh yeah. no there's eight no there's not they see. I have this other thing here, but I've got two of, of um, no, I, I'm fine here. I've got two of, uh, there we go, here, eight. I don't, oh, I get it. Okay, yeah, I'm right. Okay, I'm getting used to this, folks. Please give me a break, okay? I'm, I, need, I still don't understand why Tom is square and not 16 well, because he somehow he hasn't got his camera adjusted correctly, and let's not get into that. It looks fine. <laughs> It looks fine. You know? Yeah, I'm not going to adjust my camera right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You can, I think, do that up in Skype. You can tell it, you know, what size you have and whatever. But, <laughs> what size? What? Yeah. yeah. Size doesn't matter. For the, size. For the, this week, what? this week, I'll probably spend the whole week trying to get used to this. Uh, You're doing fine, Alex. You're 79 years old. You're doing great. Yeah, well, it's not. A, it, I'll tell you something. It's not as big a problem as I thought it was. In fact, once I get everybody in there, uh, there's really very little work I have to do. You know, it looks fantastic. I just, OPS software. It's is just awesome. that there's a real surprise when we get 12 people. There's a real surprise I've got waiting for you. It, and it's not a full house. Bug. Full house. I have a I have a royal flush waiting in case we go to oh. ten. Oh, you got a flush too. Huh? Yeah, I got a cool. flush too. But then when we finally go to twelve, I've got something else. Oh. Yeah. Does it involve breasts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I never I never thought of doing that, but you know. he's working on. But it. then yep. again, I would be on a wanted poster over at the Me Too movement, and I don't want to do that. Uh. Boy, how many of us uh, in this business would be in trouble today for any, you know, I mean, I was, I was a good guy. I never, I don't think I did anything that anybody could okay. accuse me of, but there could be some crazy human being who would come forward and say, Alex looked at me and I felt uncomfortable, you know. 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you no, know, I, I teach editing and I. You know, I, I'm hypersensitive. Like when you want to encourage someone in my class, you're doing a great job. Is it okay to touch their shoulder when you say that, you know? And if you do, do you have to do it on a guy's shoulder? You know? Yeah. It's just, this is stuff that gets in your head. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, I, I just, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of wonder about, uh, you know, what I may have done or not done that could have caused me to become part of the ire of the Me Too movement. They don't care anymore because I'm nobody now, you know. And they don't go after people who are nobody. They go after yeah. But if you were running for office, they would come out of the woodwork. Well, I don't know who would though, you know. I mean, I don't think that I ever, you know. I mean, there were women that I had one night stands with and things like that, but they were all very consensual, and I never, you know, forced them into it. It was something that happened rather naturally. Um, but it, it you yeah, still you, look what the look what the guy down in Virginia supposedly that was consensual and he's getting nailed for it. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Yeah, you well, know. Yeah. So you know, I mean, today, today, 
Uh, if I were, you know, as you say, uh, Pence is quite correct. Don't be alone in a room with a woman. Yeah, unless it's your wife is with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you, 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 Alex. Yeah. Did you ever do anything with Lynn Samuels? Because she would come after you. She <laughs> would. <laughs> uh, as the old saying goes, I wouldn't have touched Lynn Samuels with your dick. Okay, so. <laughs> That was yeah, one of the most. Paula that Palm was one of the Christine. most unattractive women I've ever had the pleasure to be around. And by the way, also one of the worst human beings I've ever known. But <laughs> I just love doing people. That. People want to don't know Lynn Samuels is she? I worked with her at uh, Sirius XM, and she hated my fucking guts because somehow I showed up to the prom wearing the same dress. Okay. And, and uh, she felt competitive towards me, and so she decided to hate me for everything, you know. And I could never figure it out, because I was always very nice to her. Yes, uh, yes, Sir Patrick. My, my favorite thing is when you had her sister on, and her sister hated her, too. <laughs> yeah, when she died. <laughs> no, what happened was Lynn, Lynn, Sam, Lynn, Lynn Samuels died, which was a favor to everybody. The nicest thing that Lynn ever did was to die. Uh, and uh, her, I had her sister on. We did. They said we're going to do a memorial for her on the air, and you're the host. I went. Oh, my. I said, you know how I feel about Lynn. They said, yeah, but you're going to be the host. Okay, so I'm the host, and so they say, oh, we have Lynn Samuel's sister on the phone. I go, okay, fine. I talk to her, and I say, um, do you have any memories about uh, about Lynn? And she said, well, she was one of the worst human beings I've ever known. I think that was, was that what she said, Patrick? Something to that effect. It was something like, I remember I was laughing my ass off when I heard it. Yeah. Because, because yeah, you hosted this memorial on the radio for yeah. her. Yeah. You, you know, and, and here's her sister, her, her blood. <laughs> I didn't like her either, so. Yeah, I, I didn't like her either. And, and I just went, wow, you know, well, uh, thank you so much for calling and talking to us about your memories of Lynn. And her only memory of Lynn was she didn't like her. Uh, Can you imagine that funeral that wake, Alex? They probably all came in sweatpants. I, I think people actually came to her funeral to make sure she was dead. She was gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's dead. There's an old joke. I can't remember. Who the, I can't remember who the two actors were, but there was a guy in Hollywood by the name of Harry Cohn who ran Columbia Pictures, and Harry Cohn was a son of a bitch, and he died, and they had the funeral. I can't remember who the two people were that went to the funeral, and one of them looked down the coffin and said, "Can you imagine this? Look at all the people who showed up." And one guy said, "You give the people what they want, and they'll come." <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Supposedly true story, true story, but uh, I don't know if there was a funeral for Lynn because she died in her apartment and was dead for two days. You know, I hear about this a lot lately, like John Rockwell, when he died, was in his apartment for two days dead. And then my friend, uh, um, um, Fred Reamer, my attorney, who died uh, over the weekend, uh, was in his apartment for two days before they found him. And Lynn Samuels was in there for two days, uh, maybe three days before they found her. And then they had to work their way through all the rubble that was in the apartment to find her. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Tom. Come back next week. Yeah, I, I'm really <laughs> sad to hear about Fred Reaver. You know, I, I voted for him. Did you really? Well, he ran, didn't he, for something? He ran for Alameda County District Attorney. Uh-huh, right. And I voted for him. So, uh, I hope Good they, lawyer, uh, good guy. Uh you know, and I, my only regret now is, and, and as I get older, I'm beginning to say I better do something about this, but I don't, is that I haven't talked to Fred in maybe four or five years. He came, he was here in New York, and we had dinner, and he came by, and we saw each other for the first time in a long time. And uh, we kept saying we got to keep in touch with each other, and we just never did, you know? And I feel bad about that, but maybe that's good because I would maybe feel worse than I do right now about him being mm. dead, and I feel pretty rotten, you know. But uh, he was my attorney, and the name Reamer is a perfect name for a Reamer, for a uh, lawyer. <laughs> Actually, his mother uh, had, a, had a, 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 a partnership with another lawyer, 
and they were a divorce firm. This is true. <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> true. And the name of the divorce firm was Skinner and Reamer. <laughs> <laughs> Reamer, I hardly knew her. But I loved I loved Fred. He was he was a good guy, and I uh, uh, he took me out on his boat all the time, and then I would heave my guts out, and you know he, he was a, he was a, he was a nice person. So sorry, sorry to see him go, but you know none of you care. You didn't know him. What? How old was he? Do you know? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm fascinated with death. I don't know why, but anyway. Oh, and, you and me both. Well, I always used to read the obituaries on the radio. And the reason yeah. I would read the uh, obituaries is I wanted to see what age people were dying at. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, uh, 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 but what, what I'm beginning to find out is that they all die younger than me. <laughs> you know? I mean, these people are going like flies. I mean, I lost John Rockwell and Fred Reamer in about the same week and a half. All right? And uh, I lost, uh, uh, I've lost, I lost Dennis Hoff this year. Uh, and oh, uh, was it year. this year or last year? Yeah. Last year. It was yeah. in October. October, yeah. It was before the election. Yeah. yeah. But he won the election. He won the election. After uh, he died. And, and and I really liked him uh, a lot. He was a good friend. And so I'm losing a lot of good friends, you know. And I, I, I guess that's going to happen to all of you if you, God forbid, live as long as I have, you know. And the only thing I, 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 I'm really worried about now is my friend uh, 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 Jack, Jack uh, Garfine is, has been in the hospital. Uh and he's like 78, uh, 98, right? He's, excuse me, 88. 88. And, uh, you know, uh, a mere youngster. And uh, I just made friends with him a few, a few years ago and have come to love the man dearly. And knowing that I'm making friends with a guy who is that old, that I'm going to lose him if I don't go first, okay? That's when you don't lose anybody anymore It's when you die. You know, mm -hmm. so if you live long enough, you know, the good news is you lived long enough. The bad news is everybody, you know, starts dying. I mean, you know, hell, I almost lost Mick Jagger. Yeah, he's in New York doing the valve thing. I heard on the radio. They were placing a valve. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll have the heart of a pig now. So, yeah, he's going to go. He'll be well, all right. This conversation is turned pretty depressing. Yes, Thanks. isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about death, you know. Well, um, uh, well, uh, you know, I mean, Tom was always the caretaker of death because you, you always, and your your main thing online is to always post people dying. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. In fact, I used to send you obituaries to read uh, on the air. Yeah. Your obituary said that. Well, what I did is I originally when I did the obituaries, I would read some names from the actual obituaries. Okay, uh, and, and then uh, Death notices. one day I, I had some woman approach me at a party and she looked at me like she wanted to kill me. And oh she God. said, you kidded about my father dying on the radio. I, we, didn't, we didn't kid about them. We just read them, right? You did this in San Francisco? Yeah, but yeah. she didn't like the fact that I did them as part of the obituaries. So from then on, I never did private people. I did public people, and that was it. You know, I she never... should have been honored. I'd have thought. Yeah. I would think so too. But she looked like she was going to kill me. And this was at like some function that Live One, uh, that Live One Hundred Five had in San Francisco, and it was like uh, listener appreciation party or something like right. that. And so she's over there with me, literally giving me the eye, uh, like I thought she was going to pull out a knife and kill me. Okay, and meanwhile, the general manager is sitting over in another corner, looking at all this going on, saying, "Gee, that fan really loves Alex," you know. <laughs> and I'm and I'm uh, darting my eyes around, you know. And I didn't have my I did have this at one time, my bodyguard with me that night, so uh, uh, it, it was it was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. And so after that, I just said, "I think I stopped doing the obituaries." You did. 
you it, stopped doing them for yeah, a while. Yeah. And then when I, if I started them up again, it was because I was reading the, the famous people obituaries, you know. And then you could talk about some famous person who died who invented the cure for, you know, hemorrhoids or something, you know. Right. And honor them. It was kind of an honor. <laughs> But but you you you're very good at that. You you you're fascinated with death. Well, I I, I like that they're, they're like little little mini biographies, and and I like the people that you would not normally know about until they die, and then you see all the the really interesting things they did with their life. It can be if it can be quite quite inspirational in a way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it can be very inspirational. Uh, and, and and I you know I was really uh, I was really happy uh, that you took up the mantle, okay. Uh, <laughs> nobody better to take up that mantle than to uh, uh, have uh, our good friend Tom Yamaguchi be the uh, keeper of death. There <laughs> is a, a great there's a great uh, documentary about the uh, obituary department at the New York Times called Obit that I could I would recommend. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fascinating, fascinating uh, movie. Well, you know, they write all those obituaries ahead of time. Yeah, they have yeah. a morgue. Yeah. Uh, in other words, there's an, obituary, the there's an obituary written for, uh, for instance, Barack Obama right now. And sure. every time he does something, they'll go back and look at it and see if they should add something to the, to the obituary. The same thing is true at, uh, at radio and television stations. Uh, they all Entertainment have... Tonight, we have a big library of uh, obits already written, mm -hmm. ready to go. Like Betty Betty White, she, we, that's already finished. You you work at uh, Entertainment Tonight? Uh, I used to. I'm I'm part time now, but I I was there for 13 years. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, uh, they would do uh, most of these places have these obituaries ready to roll, and you just kind of keep them up to date, right? If yep. something new yep. happens in their lives, like. With Betty White, nothing much happens, so they probably just have it there, you know. I'm telling you, it's ready to go. We had <laughs> at, at, at uh, I remember, was it at WABC, at WPLJ, which was ABC, we actually had, it was there on the wall in case of the, uh, almost break glass in case of the death of the president. And what it was, was a, was it a program you immediately put on the air that had like funereal music and a history of the president and an honor to him and all of that, ready to go, even though he was alive and kicking. So oh, that's you. I thought Mr. Death, Tom Yamaguchi would be interested in that <laughs> fact. Uh, but uh, of course, when uh, when Trump dies, they're going to be playing "Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <something like that. laughs> easy. <laughs> you know, I'm wondering if he died tomorrow, how would I handle that? And I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would be too wonderful in that case. A three-day yep. drunk, man, I'd be so happy. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I would get on here and say, "Gee, you know, uh, in spite of everything, we're going to miss him." No. No. If he died tomorrow, I'd be, uh, uh, I would have some video of fire. Say, oh, shit, well, now we got Mike Pence. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that, would, that would be the other negative spot on the, on the whole thing. But anyway, hey, listen, if you listen closely, what is that? That's a theme song of uh, my theme, which is a theme song. Ah, this has been fun, and this has all worked well. I still have to learn how to do it rather seamlessly, but, you know, what the hell. Uh, but it's good to have you here, like Charlie is here and Scott is here. Let me see if I can get all these names right. Michael was here and Kevin was here and Tom was here. I'm reading these off as you see them on the screen. And Tony was here and Patrick was here. And Vernon, are you, st are you awake, Vernon? Yes, I'm awake. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure you didn't say anything tonight, Vernon, but we love having you on anyway. Because you take up the uh, the secret square. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for our uh, our citizens panel and for everything that's going on tonight. And uh, if all of you would just uh, give a big wave goodbye, I'll wave back at you, and uh, we'll uh, we'll call it a night. Everybody, thank you so much for having been part of the citizens panel. How do I get rid of these people? Oh, that's how I get rid of them. Okay, and then I turn myself off. And the next program, 
uh, can come on here and do this all over again. Anyway, uh, Jack Bishop is next. That's the next program that's coming up right now. And uh, then tomorrow night at 9.30, Damian Chaplin will be here with a little program called The Intersection, or The Exchange. The Intersection is the next show coming up. And then I'll be here tomorrow night with a program called The Ramble, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Did I just send a kiss to you? That's sick.